okay, or this type of charcoal filter only. All right. Now, a step up from that is going to be something like this, which is another carbon sediment type filter. These are paper type filters. This one's actually had water run through it. You can see how green it is. The stuff's growing right on it. And this one here is a carbon filter. And so you open these canisters, put these filters in them, hook up your plumbing from one end to the other. And after seven or eight months, you better change them because they'll be filthy. All right. And what they do is just trap. They just trap filth. Now, the reason I don't like these types of filters is because if they're, they're great when they're brand new because they definitely improve the quality of your water for initially. But the longer you use them, the worse that they're going to in concentration. Now, I do, I do little studies because I own a health store. I love this little meter. So when I take the, hook up the plumbing to these things, at the beginning, I test the water that was normal out of the tap before we plumbed this thing. And it'll be 303 parts per million. Then I test the water after it comes out the other end, and it'll be 60 parts per million. So there was an improvement. But guess what happens over time when this thing starts getting plugged up with stuff? I start testing it six months later, and it's seven and eight and 900 parts per million, and I have a filter on there. That means that as it gets bad, it's concentrating the poisons in, in the filters. And that's the negative aspect of them. What are we? Uh huh. Oh, can we uh, check our filter? I don't know how long it's been since it's been changed. Sure. Let's check. Sure. It. Check it once. I'm not sure I'm the filter here. When you're talking about how uh, over time it doesn't do the job, but if you replace the filters. Yes, and that's the key. Again. Yes, that's the key to the whole thing. Is if you're going to use these types of things, it's to change them often. Yeah. That is the key. Of course, the companies who sell them would love it if you changed them often. Okay, now. He's just brought me a little sampling of his filtered water. Now, what type of filter have you got there? What is it? Charcoal. Charcoal, okay. It's hard. So, Solid. you've got 200 parts per million as opposed to three, what was it? 300. 300. Now, that's equivalent to this type of filtration because this is just charcoal here. So, that helped 100 parts per million, and this is. Probably not brand new filter. Probably needs replacing, right? I'm going to show you what you need in just a minute. Okay. And uh, so part of what happens is we put all these things in. They're going through. I'm going to just share with you some of the things they're finding in the inorganic parts of the water. This hardness stuff that's in the water. They're finding asbestos. They're finding mercury. They're finding hard minerals, arsenic, barium, nitrates, copper, and lead. And by the way, you wonder, kind of wonder why we'd be finding copper and lead. You know that 90% of the plumbing systems under your home right here in Provo, right here in most cities in America, are going to be copper and lead fittings. <laughs> copper pipes with lead solder fittings, uh, soldered together. So it's, it's no wonder to me that over the years the deterioration wouldn't show up in water. What type of biological things do they find in this water? They find bacteria, viruses, parasites, gerardia, cysts, uh, big cysts of gerardia worms inside of water tanks. They also find radioactive components, strontium-90, plutonium, radium, and organic petroleum-based pipes such as those plastic white ones that you see in your, your homes. They're finding that those things are having a negative effect. They're actually breaking down with insecticides, pesticides, and herbicides, and industrial solvents. Is that PVC pipes? PVC mm -hmm. pipes. Mm -hmm. So those, are, those things can be broken down in time just running certain chemistries through them. And we're talking about we live in the same place for 30, 40 years. So it's no wonder that a, a period of time can have an effect breaking these pipes down, and particularly the glues. Because let's face it, if you've ever watched somebody glue these pipes together, it's a real quick process, fit them together, they stick, and now they're supposed to last the lifetime of a home, 40, 50 years. But they actually do break down, these glues do break down. So there's advantages. Most of these things cannot take out all the things we just talked about, okay? Now, let's, so we talked about charcoal, we talked about carbon block, micron filters, these types of 
paper and carbon block filters to have advantage and disadvantage. Before you leave here tonight, I intend to give each one of you a little something I found in a, in a Water Wisdom Technology book. I'm going to give you a sheet that shows you the advantages and disadvantages to all forms of water treatment. So remind me to give you that tonight. Uh, if I give it to you now, most of you would probably think the class was over and start leaving, so I wait till the very end to do that. All right, now let's talk about this beautiful machine here. This is called a reverse osmosis machine. Now, what I'm going to take you from is from the Volkswagen to the Rolls-Royce and help you understand what's, what we've got to do along the way here. What is the strong point of, of reverse osmosis? That's what this machine is here. This combines these two technologies with a micro gelatin type bladder inside of here that forces water through in a very, very small micron so that it traps almost every single thing with the exception of a few um, there. If you look at these two blocks here on the end, all of these uh, categories says, what does this thing do? Will it trap bacteria, protonium, calcium, chlorides, cytoplasms, uh, detergents, fluorides, nitrates, pesticides, phosphates, radon, sediments, sodium sulfates, viruses, and you'll notice that the two on the end have almost all the black dots. And that's because RO and distillation are very close to each other. And I'm going to show you the exact advantages and disadvantages of them. Here is the strong point of reverse osmosis. Number one, it removes the taste. Water that has that type of hardness does not taste very good. And it's considered excellent in the water uh, testing on how well does it remove the taste. It removes odors. What does swamp water smell like? Swamp. Like a swamp. Like pollution, okay? I have been to countries that have drinking water that comes out of the, ta out of the tap that tastes just like the smell of a swamp. Or, and smells like a, a swamp. And I'm going, how could these folks down here? I remember going to Panama City in Panama one time. And I poured a glass of water. And I kid you not, it just blew my mind. Because I'm going, this has to be a mistake. <laughs> it was really there. Reverse osmosis will remove or um, do organic reductions. Uh, so it will take things that are organic and reduce them. And, and that's good good for water purification. Inorganic reductions, it does exceptionally well. So we're talking about sediments and lead and copper and mercury and all of those types of things. Radioactive reductions, it does well. And sediment removal, it does good. Now, here are some of the weaknesses of, of, of RO. One of the things is it requires water pressure. You must have water pressure. So sometimes when I visit people on farms that do not have water pressure, they're getting water from a well, um, they won't like this very much when I tell them that it needs an ideal water pressure of at least 35 to 40 pounds PSI to operate properly.